Sold me the Brooklyn Bridge. Frankie, why, you old son of a gun. I thought it was you, you funny-looking Swede, but that outfit kind of threw me. Just my working clothes. Oh, putting a dull edge on the shoppers, huh? Yeah, I discovered there's more money in being a sucker than trying to find one. Hey, what are you doing, Frankie? Oh, I got a little pitch across the street. I want you to see it. I will, maybe tomorrow, huh? Nice voice. Yeah, loud too. Joe's uh, stuck on it, right? Yeah. How did you know? His type. Put your arms around me, honey. Like old times, ain't it? You and Joe are gonna be partners again? Maybe. He could sure use me around here. Don't he know sawdust on the floor went out of style five years ago? Oh, the overalls in Mrs. Murphy's shoulder. Nobody's. Good evening, gentlemen. It's the Irish. They're the curse of this whole world. They aren't worth a nick. True, true. Defend yourself, you spalpin. Boy, never better. Hey, you're looking great. Frankie, what kind of a friend is it you are that doesn't tell me that Eddie is here? He just got here this minute. None of your excuses. I should have been notified. <laughs> you know, it's been since the Chicago Fair that I last looked upon you, Eddie. That's right. How's the world been treating you? Not often enough. Ah, but here we are, wasting words on an occasion that calls for celebration. You know what I'm going to do, Eddie? Mm -hmm. You're going to let him buy you a drink? Yes. 
Now, don't say it as if it wasn't an honor. It's a privilege I reserve only for me friends. And you have no enemies. That is true. I love the world. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do, Finnegan. I'll buy you a drink for one course of that Mrs. Murphy. Hi, bartender. Finnegan is here. Coming right up. Ah, good old Mrs. Murphy. Mrs. Murphy gave a party just about a week ago. Everything was plentiful. The Murphys, they're not slow. They treated us like gentlemen, and we tried to act the same. Only for what happened, well, it was an awful shame. Now, when Mrs. Murphy dished the chowder out, she fainted on the spot. She found a pair of overalls at the bottom of the pot. <laughs> Tim Nolan, he got ripping mad. His eyes were bulging out. He jumped upon the piano, and loudly he did shout, Oh! That's true, I can lick the mick that threw the overalls in Mrs. Murphy's job. Finnegan, you're still in great voice. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good <laughs> chase, the bartender. Come on, the boss will see you now. Oh, good. Keep the change. Oh, uh, can I leave this bag here for a while? Sure. There you are, Finnegan. This ought to hold you till I get back, huh? Oh, I see you're not expecting to be gone long, eh? <laughs> <laughs> see you later. <laughs> what will you be drinking, Frankie? Nothing. Just breathe to my face. That'll be enough. Glad to see you. Hello, Joe. Eddie. <laughs> This is quite a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> Come on over here and meet Charlie Fitz. This is Eddie Johnson. How do you do, Charlie? Glad to know you. <laughs> What's this, bird seat for vultures? Well, when they see me in this outfit, you'd be surprised how many people want to teach me to play cards. <laughs> Eddie and me used to work together. Oh, so he's the one. Yeah, we've been partners in everything from a shooting gallery to a geek show. Once we even had a whole carnival, didn't we, Joe? <laughs> Sit down. Thanks. Well, it's been a long while, Eddie. Let's see now. Where was the last time I saw you? The 10th of July, two years ago. Room 212, the Lee Hotel in St. Louis. Remember? Yeah. Yeah, now I remember. I thought you would. We had an argument about how the carnival should be run, so we decided to play a hand of poker for the whole works. I won it with three of the prettiest aces you ever saw. That reminds me, I've been carrying something ever since. I've been wanting to give it to you. I didn't have a chance. You pulled out in such a hurry. What's that? Just a little something I found the next morning under the cushion of your chair. Uh, you know another thing? Counting your three, that deck had seven aces. Uh, well, look, boys, I, I guess I'll be moseying along. I, I can see you two fellas have a lot to talk about. So long, Joe. See you later, Tony. Glad to meet you. Same here. Well, what are you gonna do about it, Joe? Nothing. I figure that makes up for all the times I went to the cash drawer and found your hand in it. No, I think I'll just keep right on forgetting about it. Why don't you do the same thing, Eddie? I tried, Joe. Why, I used to spend an hour a day seeing if I could forget, but it didn't work. So I finally said to myself, you'll never get this out of your craw until you find Joe and get what's coming to you. That's why I'm here. <laughs> you gonna sue me, Eddie? No, I figured since you were cheating that night, we'd just outlaw the hand. So we're still partners, and I own half this joint. Now, there's only one trouble. I don't figure the same way. Well, in that case, I guess I'll just have to worm myself in. I wouldn't try it if I were you, Eddie. Oh, I've got to, Joe. If I didn't pay you back, why, I just wouldn't have any respect for myself. You see, I'm the kind that... Yeah? Joe, I just wanted to show you my dress. Oh, I didn't know you were busy. Well, that's all right, honey. He's leaving. Oh, uh, Kate Farley, Eddie Johnson. Hello. How do you do, Miss Farley? I just wanted you to see my costume for my new number. Like it? Yeah, it looks like a million. Hey, Eddie? When I get through molding it, that'll be a nice dress. If I were wearing a suit like that, I certainly wouldn't talk about clothes. Oh, I don't know. If you were wearing a suit like this, I think it would be an improvement. Ah, uh, never mind him, honey. He's always joking. Come on, Eddie, push off. You won't change your mind about my proposition, Joe? Sorry, no dice. Uh, suit yourself. 
The show's running a little long. You think I ought to cut out my second chorus? If it's anything like your other number, I'd cut out the first chorus, too. Listen, you apple knocker. I've had just about enough of your... And when you take that thing off, you'd better hang it up in a birdcage. It's liable to fly away. The big mouth? What does he think he is, talking to me no, like... No, no, take it easy, honey. get off telling me this is no good? I picked it out myself. Who is he, anyway? Oh, he's just a guy I used to hang around with. Oh, the plow jockey? He just does no style when he sees it. Why, of course not. Now, forget about it, will you? Come on, now, where's that smile? There, that's better. Say, they got some fresh lobsters in over the grotto. How about helping me tie into a couple after the show? Well, I can't pass up fresh lobsters. Good, I'll pick you up in the dressing room. All right, see you later. Attraction, I'll cut my throat. Would anybody give a dime to see that? <laughs> Very funny. I'm starving and you're grinning. Frankie, I've been trying to tell you. Listen to me and you'll be rolling in dough. Why don't you leave me alone? But I've got an idea for a pinch that's worth a fortune. Then take my advice. Don't tell anybody. Open up a place for yourself. Well, I've tried. Looked all morning. All the good locations are taken. This would be an ideal spot for it, Frankie. <laughs> Hurry, hurry, the only tattooed woman on the street. And every time she shakes, moving pictures. If you're smart, you'll listen to me. Look, Eddie, you're a sweet fellow. You're a fine boy. But I haven't got time for you. I'm trying to make a buck for myself. Go back to the walnut shells and the peas, will you? All right, Francis, little lady is not a freak. She's an education. Look, here's a sketch I made. We could make the change over in a couple of days. Now, that's the way the front would look. Say, where did you get this idea? Thought of it last night. We could fix it over for less than 300. Oh, I see. The 300, that's where I come in. How old? No, come on, no, kid. No, no, no. I've got the money, too. All you put in is this location and your time. All you want is my time and this location? That's right. How about it? Eddie, you just made yourself a deal. After six months with Josephine, even suicide looks good to me. Come on, let's have a beer and talk it over. Hurry, 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 hurry. It only costs 10 cents to see this darn exhibit, which was brought to this country at the staggering cost of $280,000. What you see before you, folks, is just a sample of what's waiting for you on the inside. You'll gasp at the incomparable beauty of the 10 genuine Turkish harem girls. You'll thrill at the breathtaking extravaganza entitled A Night in a Turkish Harem. And that ain't all, folks. You'll see a young Turkish maiden sold to the Sultan for 20 pieces of silver. And finally, my friends, you're going to hear the authentic primitive music of Turkestan as played by Abu Mandeb, a genuine native of mysterious Constantinople. Sahib. A genuine native. That's Frankie, ain't it? Dolly, here's where I get even. Abu here neither speaks nor understands a bit of English. But how he can play those weird and difficult cadenzas of his world-famous native music. Listen, folks, just listen to that melodious melody. Hello, Frankie. Hello, honey. Glad to see you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that just goes to show you how intelligent these Turks are. Why, this man arrived in our country only two days ago, and already he speaks a few words of the English language. Now, I wonder how many of you people out there, after only two days or 48 hours in Constantinople, could say, Vazaru uh, Dastanabuka, which means, hello, honey, glad to see you in Turkish. Ha <laughs> ha, it's about as Turkish as that Indian blanket he's sitting on. <laughs> Will you please move along? You see, Abu here comes from a very fine family. And according to native tradition, he's not allowed to converse with anyone so obviously beneath him. That's funny. He used to talk to me plenty when we were working together over... All right, Abu. All right, I'll ask her. 
Young lady, if you can't figure out why you're wearing that atrocity on your head, he wants to know, did you lose an election bet or did you just fall in a fruit salad? <laughs> <laughs> All right, hurry, 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 folks. The show starts in exactly three minutes. Goodbye, sweetheart. Hey, you'll see ten lovely maidens in all their unadorned beauty. And when I say unadorned, folks, I mean unadorned. I should have slapped his face. I don't know why you didn't. Hello, honey. Listen, if you don't tell that pal of yours to stop ragging me, I'm going to bust a bottle over his head. Do you know what he just did? He... Where is everybody? That's what we've been trying to figure out. Well, the weather ain't any too good. Mm, Maybe it's good might... enough for that coot show up the street. He's packing them in. Good evening, boy. Hello, Finnegan. Isn't it too bad about Steve? Steve? The bartender in there. The doctor was in and discovered he had chronic prognosis. And him handling all them glasses the people drink out of. I had a drink in there last night. You don't suppose I caught any? If you hadn't hit you yet, you're all right. But I wouldn't be tempting fate twice. Don't worry, I won't. Billy, if you're after something as intoxicating as whiskey, why don't you take in that new coot show that just opened up? Them Turkish colleens will make you feel like a new buy again. <laughs> I will. <laughs> So you're the one, huh? What's you're the big now, guy? wait a minute. Joe, leave him alone. It's not his fault. You know who put him up to this, don't you? I got a pretty good idea. Go on, Finnegan, beat it. Oh, the nerve of that guy. You're not going to let him get away with this, are you? Why don't you go down there That's and... That's exactly what I'm going to do. Louis, I think my old friend Eddie needs a lesson. Good. I know some guys in Brooklyn that swell teachers. And now, folks, you'll thrill the breathtaking extravaganza entitled A Night in a Turkish Hair. The show starts immediately, folks, so step right up and get your tickets and pass inside. Gentlemen, you haven't missed a thing yet. The show starts in just a few minutes. Hurry, 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 folks. This is one show you can't afford to miss. And there never was a minute King Solomon was in it Wives for breakfast, wives for dinner Wives for supper time, go away Lots of fancy dancing And it doesn't cost a dime In my harem, my harem There's Danny, Danny, Jenny And the dance they do Would make you wish that you were in a harem With Pat Malone Chase me.
So that's the kind of a place this is. You'll never get your wallet back now, mister. Maybe I won't, but nobody else in this joint is going to get robbed. No, Shannon. Let's pull this place to peace. Come on, let's go. Just resting. Ooh, what happened? Seems like Joe wants to play a little rough. Wow, looks like a earthquake hit the joint. Yeah. What was that you said about bricklayers? So, they're a bunch of lilies, are they? Hey, wait a minute, what are you guys trying to pull? Yeah, here? what is this? Sure, and you'd better be taken back what you said about the Irish, too. We haven't said anything about anybody. Never you mind, we heard what you said. What's the matter, lads? These two guys are making cracks about Irish bricklayers. Mm. Telling me that one Irishman can lick ten Irishmen. Yeah. He did. Yes. You wouldn't want to be proven that, would you? You're not getting away from me, you. Oh, tough, eh? <laughs> Yeah. Wasn't that beautiful? Magnificent. Oh, let's go, Joe. They're only having fun. Come on, South, get out of my way. Oh, if you want to fight the Irish, well, you'll have to start with me. Finnegan out of town tonight without anybody seeing him, I'll have Joe just where I want him. But suppose if Finnegan don't want to go. Well, it's up to us to make him. He's got to leave Cody tonight. Well, he can't go like this. We got to bring him to first. Has he breathing? <laughs> Either he's breathing or he just had an alcohol rub. Get his head up. <laughs> I thought that'd bring him around. There you are. Easy now. Don't, don't let him swallow the glass. It's the only one we got. You better? <laughs> uh, 
uh, the upper half of Finnegan is fully recovered. Uh, however, the lower extremities are still in a coma. Perhaps another drink. You had us worried. Ah, oh, Frankie, me boy, you can't kill the Irish. They just have to wear out like a pair of pants. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, there, I feel like myself again. Now, wait, wait a minute, Finnegan. You're hurt a lot worse than you think you are. Yeah, and the only way for you to get better is to take it easy for a month or so. Sure, go away someplace by yourself and relax. Someplace like uh, Atlantic City. Now I know you haven't got any money, sir. I don't have to go anywhere. I tell you, boys, there's nothing wrong with me. Ah, but the doctor thinks different. The doctor? Yeah. yeah, while you were unconscious, we had the doctor up here to examine you. Two doctors. They had a consultation. Yeah, they said you've, uh, you've got coranium contusions. Contusions? What's that? Mm, your cranium don't contuse. Uh, you see this thing here? What does the doctor call it? The celebrium. The celebrium is supposed to come around here, join these things up here, then it meets the macavinities. Then it crosses up here to this thing here. Do you understand? Uh, well, yours doesn't. Uh, and rest is the only cure. Cure? Ah, if an Irishman had to rest every time he was hit on the head, none of them would be finding time to go to work. I tell you, boys, I feel perfectly all... Do you feel things swaying a bit? No. Do you, Eddie? No. I'm beginning to feel a bit dizzy. That's what the doctor said. That's the first sign. Tell me, Finnegan, does it hurt you here? Right here. Well, answer me. Does it hurt you here? Yes! Now that you mention it, it does. Oh, let me feel your pulse. There you are. That's what the doctors were afraid of. He's lost all control of his hands. Isn't that a shame? Can you imagine the go... <coughs> How's your throat? Kind of parched? Uh, Look at that skin. Mm. It's all pudgy. There's no life to it. Bang. Look at those eyes. Bloodshot. Can you breathe all right? Kind of tight, huh? I can't breathe. Can you feel this? Can you feel this lap? Can you feel it? No. He's numb. Ah, it's too bad, Finnegan. Uh, too bad. Yes, it's a shame. It's a shame. But uh, the doctor said you had nothing to worry about until you start getting cold flashes. Where? Right here, at the back of your neck. Shaggy, I got him. I'm freezing. Then come on, Finnegan. We haven't got any time to waste. We got to get you on a train. Uh, get me my hat. All right. Get me an overcoat. Glory be, I was never so cold in my life. Don't worry. A month in Atlantic City will make a new man out of you. It's getting colder and colder. All right, watch it now. Take it easy. <laughs> And I got 80 kings. Hold it. We're getting close. Finnegan. May he rest in peace. Is Joe looking? Yeah, he can't figure it out. They're the ones that started it. They got them mixed to jump on me. Now, let me. Let me take one poke at them, will you? They've just been sitting there drinking, huh? Ever since Finnegan's funeral this morning. Finnegan? Oh, so that's what it was, huh? Yeah, he croaked last night. I told him that brown stuff would get him sooner or later. Here he comes. He was the best friend a man ever had. Yeah, a finer Irishman never lived. Why, I remember once the... Hello, Joe. I, uh, just heard about Finnegan. That's tough. Uh, what was it, his heart? No, Joe. His head. Yeah. Somebody hit him an awful wallop. What are you talking about? I only pushed him. I know, Joe. But you see, a brass rail don't know how to pull its punches. You guys wouldn't be trying a little high-class blackmail, would you? Joe, how can you say a thing like that? After I went and lied for you, told the coroner he hit his head on a curb. Oh, but if it ever comes out it happened in here, we'd have to tell the truth, Eddie. Yeah, I suppose so. You know, you can't tell a lie in court. That's perjury. No, you're right. We'd have to say we saw Joe hit him. 
You know, it's very funny, but there are a dozen people around here who swear I was in my office all the time. Why, sure. You've got nothing to worry about. Just like that time the guy was knifed in Gus Schneider's place. Gus beat the rap. That's right. The only thing they could do to him was close his place down as a public nuisance. Oh, they always do that when there's trouble in a joint. <laughs> but that's better than manslaughter. Yeah, but still be ashamed to see a nice place like this all boarded up. Okay, Eddie. How much do you want? Joe, I'm surprised at you. I don't want anything. All I want is a chance to make a little more money for you. Why don't you let me run this place for you? I'll put on the shows and give it some class. Yeah, give it some class. Have all the swells come in here. Rich people. After all, what are rich people? Poor people with money. You'd have me rattling a tin cup in a week. You'd steal me blind. Now you can handle a cash register. And I don't want any salary. All I'll take is 50% of any new business I bring in. No. It'll cost me less to bribe my way out. Well, have it your own way, Joe. Hello, Murph. Hello, boys. Arch is a shame about Finnegan. I hear he stumbled and cracked his head. Well, he didn't exactly stumble, Murph. He was, uh, pushed. You see, uh... Oh, Eddie. Eddie, uh, you can start work tomorrow morning. Oh, thanks, Joe. Pushed, you say he was? Yeah, the devil pushed him, Murph. You see, he's been shoving him around for years. And finally, he shoved too hard. Well, that's the way Finnegan wanted to go. Quick-like without anyone even having a chance to say goodbye to him. That's just the way he went. Cuddle up, Mr. Toasty. Love me, mine. Come up and cuddle. Cuddle up a little closer. Love me, mine. Cuddle up, be my little. Clean, clean and fine. Like thin cheeks so rosy. Like to make you comfy, cozy. Cuddle up, Mr. Toasty. Okay, Kate. Nice rehearsal, folks. Come on down here for a minute, all of you. I want you to meet somebody. Hey, Eddie, come here. This is Eddie Johnson. From now on, he's going to be putting the shows on here. And whatever he says goes. I'd like to rehearse the whole bill once more, but I'm going to start with Miss Farley's last number, so the rest of you can go. But be back in a half hour. Can you beat that? Joe! The idea. What do you mean he's putting on the shows? I'll explain to you later. Do me a favor and do what he says, will you? Come on now, be a good girl. Now let's run through the song again, Miss Farley. What was wrong with it the last time? Well, you moved around too much. It was too fast and too loud. And you didn't make the words mean anything. Oh. Outside of that, it was great, huh? Well, I think it'll help you take it in this tempo. <laughs> That's slow. That's fine, then stand still. Well, what about Maggie Klein and Bonnie Thornton? That's the way they sing. Sure, that's the way everybody sings. But I'm trying to make you a little different. Well, I dance in this number, too, and I certainly can't dance to that tempo. Well, when you dance, we'll change that tempo. But when you sing, stand still and sing. Now we'll start with a chorus. Take it from there. <laughs> If you want your family in Brooklyn to hear you, use the telephone. Well, what do you expect me to do, Whisper? There's going to be a crowd out there, and they make a lot of noise. If you're good, they'll listen. But if you're not, you can yell your lungs out, and they still won't hear you. A crowd isn't just a flock of faces. It's a lot of separate people, and you've got to make each one of them feel that you're singing to him and him alone. And unless you can do that, you might just as well take up juggling. Look, you two-bit Tony Pastor. They like my style of singing around here. Nobody's going to change it. Understand? Nobody! I'll change it, Frankie. I might have to get a little rough, but... Maybe she's right. When you sing like that, it's not a bad idea to keep moving. Frankie. What 
What's he doing? Did you tell him to go back to that fast tempo? Not me, but I got a good idea who did. So you're going to sing it your way, huh? That's right, Mr. Belasco. You catch on quick. You go down and tell that leader to play it the way I told him. Yeah. And tell him to keep vamping. Right. That's it. Now just keep vamping. What's going on? What's the matter with the curtain? I told him to hold it for a minute. I just want to fix the bottom of your dress. Now what's wrong with it? What? What are you doing? Stop it! There. Let's see what you can run the mile in now. Why don't you dare put those on? Still or so help me, you'll break your neck. Put me down. What are you trying to do? Make a singer out of you. I'll relax. I won't. And I won't sing either. I'll show you. I won't sing a note. All right, then just keep quiet and people will take you for an overstuffed sparrow. What are you doing? Well, while we're at it, we might as well. Stop it. You're ruining it. I paid a lot of money for this dress. I, I should have dipped you in boiling water first. Oh, you big baboon. Oh, those handcuffs. Here. Cover them with these. Oh, you just wait. You'll be sorry. Shut up, baby. Okay, Sam, take it away. Well, I won't say. begun Don't forget I want you only Yes You're the only one Huddle up a little closer Love you too. Well, what do you think of my way of singing now? That applause wasn't so much. Why, you couldn't have gotten any more if you'd been a parade. You know why they liked you, Kate? Because tonight you had class. You weren't cheap and gaudy. Where do you get off talking to me like that? There are a lot of people around here who like me just the way I am, see? Sure, you're the sweetheart of every clam digger who drinks beer out of a tin can. But what about the boys who drink out of glasses? You're not their type, Kate. But you could be. You've got warmth, the 
appeal. You're attractive. Yeah, very attractive. In fact, at the moment you're so attractive, I feel like kissing you. I think I will. Get away! Why, you could have all of New York singing under your window, Kate. You're talented, you're beautiful. You just try talking instead of yelling and dressing instead of overdressing. Listen to him if it isn't Mr. Astor. Look, you don't have to live on Fifth Avenue to know you don't spell class with a capital K. I'm no dummy, Kate. I went to school, finished the tenth grade. Why, I... Uh-oh, here comes that feeling again. Is that what you learned in the tenth grade? No, that's why I was kicked out of the eleventh. Oh! At this rate, I don't think I'll ever graduate. Just wait till I get these things off. I'll slap your face so hard it'll... No, you won't, Kate. Because you know I'm right. You know that tonight, for the first time, the audience treated you like a lady. And you loved it. Well, here's my face. I'm waiting. Get out of here. Good night, Kate. Good night. Thanks.
Sunday, $1,142.25, which makes a total of $8,733.10. You see, I told you I'd triple your business. Yeah, but you will listen to us. For the two weeks since you started, we've taken in $4,950 over average business. 50% uh, of that is $2,475. Oh, what a lovely picture of Lincoln. Glad to see you. You know, Joe, I've been thinking. For about 30000 we could build us a new place on that corner lot over on Surf Avenue. You can think of more ways of spending my money. No, I'll go in for half, take my divvy and match it, and we'll put it in the bank. Then every week we each chunk in the same amount, and before you know it, we'll have enough. Oh, no. Come on, Joe, give me the nod, and you can start the ball rolling right now by taking my share. Hey, wait a minute. How about my share of your share? When we build a new place, your share will be bigger. Yeah, so will my hotel bill. Go on, Frankie. Get the show started. Okay, Joe. Well, so long, Abe. Hope I see you later. Hey. I... Oh, I'm sorry. This hand keeps getting me in trouble. Michael! Gentlemen! Oh, Louis, tell the orchestra to go on, will you? I'll be backstage in a minute. I'm going to get a beer. Good. Uh, come on, Finnegan. <laughs> Just one call. We haven't heard Mrs. Murphy in a long time. Play it, Polly, will you, Bill? Yeah, sure. Another drink. Hey, Bill, let it rip. Oh, through the overalls and Mrs. Murphy's chowder. Hey, hey, forgot to tell you. I had a great song today. Be great in the show. Great song. Listen, Eddie. Eddie, will you listen? Get the money, get the money right away. I'm not fooling. Do what I say. That man you sent to, you know where. Something must have happened. He's back from there. Hurry, hurry, hurry. He's here right now. The wearing of the green. Mrs. Murphy's chow. What a pity. What a pity. The guy is back from Atlantic City. Do you get the point? He's here in the joint. You fool, you. Get the dough, Ray me. I'm pleading. Get the dough, Ray me. I'm bleeding. Get the dough, Ray me. Hey, do you know who's outside? I got a pretty good idea. I can lick the mix it through. The overalls in Mrs. Murphy's child. Well, I guess this makes up for that night in St. Louis, huh? Told you I'd worm myself in somehow. Um. Yes, she comes. Ain't we lucky? Yes, she is. The bride of old Kentucky. Miss Lulu Brown is coming down that Mississippi stream. She knocks him down. A kick in every Don't worry, pal, you will. Well, 
I'll shut my mouth. You go mad about that stuff you get about Miss Lulu from thing I've been talking about for months, the trick of making every guy feel you're singing just to him. It's tough to learn, but you've got it now. It's not so tough when it's not a trick, Eddie. You mean all those pear-shaped tones were just for me? Uh-huh. I'll be back in a minute. I want to check on things out front. You, uh... You seem to be getting along with the help very nicely. Oh, don't blame me. I was just standing there minding my own business when up she comes and practically proposes to me. Yes, I noticed how she had to chase you all around the stage to catch up with you. Well, when she gives me a look like that, well, I think it'd be very impolite to walk away, don't you? And a little crazy. Look, Eddie, I don't mind you trimming me out of money. I can laugh about that. But when it comes to Kate, 
I lose my sense of humor. Oh, I wouldn't do that, Joe. I got a feeling you're going to need it. I'm warning you, Eddie. I'm going to do everything I can to break it up. I'm trembling like a leaf, Joe. Look, you've got a good job. You make good money. I'd hate to see you wind up with those walnut shows again. Oh, you don't have to give me the boot. I was figuring on pulling out pretty soon anyway. Remember that night we talked about building that new place and I told you I was going to have it with you or without you? Well, I decided then it was going to be without you. I've just been biding my time. I don't look very worried, do I? No, Eddie, that'll take a lot more money than you've got. That's why I went to the Brooklyn Savings Bank. They said if I had an attraction like Kate, maybe they'd lend me the money. What makes you think she'll go with you? Love is a wonderful thing. Ah, you look a little worried now, Joe. <laughs> Come on, Charlie, clean off that table. Yes, sir, right away. No, but look alive. Pardon me. Uh, is Mr. Rocco in? I'm William Hammerstein. No, he hasn't come in yet. Have you got a res... Willie Hammerstein? Victoria Theater? Glad to see you, Mr. Hammerstein. No, Mr. Rocco isn't here yet, but Mr. Johnson is. Would you mind stepping this way? Right this way. He's just having his supper. Mr. Johnson, this here is Mr. Hammerstein. You know, Victoria Theater. Oh, how do you do, Mr. You you I received a letter from Mr. Rocco a few days ago asking me to drop by and hear some singer, a Kate Farley. He thought I might be able to use her in my new show. Oh, he did, huh? Well, I hadn't expected him back until 10 o'clock, but if he made an appointment with you, I No, no, there was nothing definite. I didn't know when I could make it. I just happened to be visiting friends at Brighton Beach, so I thought I'd come over. Oh, well, I'll be glad to take care of you. Jerry, show Mr. Hammerstein to a front table. Yes, sir. It's a great honor to have you with us, Mr. Hammerstein. Thank you. I like this, myself. Front table, Jerry. So that's what Joe is up to. Yeah, but why? He's afraid I'll open up a place of my own and take Kate with me. Go get Finnegan. Yeah. running out like this. Forget it. There's nobody important out front anyway. We'll be back in time for the second show. How about grabbing a little of that cool breeze on the pier, honey? Oh, I'd love to, but... Will, Will you, you stop worrying? Dolly knows all your numbers. Well, I'm not worrying about Dolly, but you're not there and Joe's not there. Do you think Frankie can handle everything? Well, I sure hope so. Mr. Hammerstein, I would like you to meet Kate Farley's father. Mr. Hammerstein, this is a great pleasure. How do you do? Sit down, Mr. Farley, sit down. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Harris. You know, Mr. Hammerstein, it's very nice of you to come all the way out here to hear me daughter sing. I promise you, you'll not be disappointed. Well, I'm sure I won't. Mr. Rocco tells me she sings beautifully. She certainly does, like a bird. Here she comes now, the little darling. Uh, is that? Yes, that's her. Wonderful. <laughs> See, like to make you comfy, cozy. Cause I love from head to toesy. So be mine. What I tell you, ain't she exquisite? Well, she... I know just what you're gonna say, Mr. H. She's too good for this joint. <laughs> Say, that dentist did a good job for her on them teeth, don't you think? Yeah, and she sure needed them. That other set was always clicking. And I'm gonna have big crystal chandeliers like Harry Hills in the Bowery. You're really gonna have yourself a place, aren't you? Coney's never seen anything like it. You know who's gonna sing for me? Who? You. Oh, really? Sure, I'm gonna have nothing but the best. You know the spot I got picked out for? It? The place right next to Sally's. Say, that's a good location. Yeah, imagine the business you could do with a first-class cafe on that corner. Mm, imagine the money it cost to build, too. Ah, don't worry. I'll get the money. I've got a couple angles I've been working on. You know, if you're not careful, you're gonna wind up owning Coney Island. <laughs> I intend to. <laughs>
another act in town, so I'm afraid I'll have to... Uh... Well, if you have to, you have to. However, I'll tell Mr. Rocco you were here and that you were greatly impressed. Yes, do that. Uh, tell him I couldn't wait. <laughs> well, goodbye, Mr. Hammerstein. Bye, Mr. Hammerstein. Good evening, boys. Mr. Hammerstein? Yes? I'm Joe Rocco. Oh, I wish I'd known you were coming tonight. Well, that's I'd... all right. Mr. Johnson took care of me. I caught the show. Well, what do you think of his folly? Well, as you told me, she's very unusual. You think he can use her? Well, I'll think it over and uh, let you know. Good night, Mr. Rocco. Good night, Mr. Humberstein. There you are. I told you I'd get you back in time. Hello, Miss Farley. Hello, Hello Andy. Andy. Hello, Andy. Hello, fellas. Hello. Hello, Joe. Hello, Mo. Oh, what's the matter? Nothing. But uh, how did you get dressed so fast? Dressed? Oh, I didn't play the first show. Dolly took my songs. The boss here gave me a little vacation. Well, it's too bad. You know who was out front? Willie Hammerstein. Oh, no. He's looking for a singer for his new show, so I invited him over to hear you. Isn't that just my luck? The one night I take off and Willie Hammerstein's in the audience, why didn't you let me in on it? Well, I didn't know he was going to catch it tonight, and I wasn't here when he came in. But, uh, Eddie was. Well, uh, how should I know which one was Hammerstein? I've never seen him before in my life. That's funny. He told me that Mr. Johnson had taken care of him very nicely. It's a funny thing, when he heard Dolly sing, he thought it was you. I wonder where he got that idea. Somebody didn't bother to change the signs. Looks like Mr. Johnson took care of a lot of things. Now, wait a minute, honey, Why I... Why didn't you tell me? Well, I... That's simple. If you went with Hammerstein, Eddie couldn't get you for his new place. And without you, there wouldn't be any new place. Why, that's not true. I could... Thanks a lot for being so nice to me tonight, Eddie. I'll never forget it. Uh, before you quit, I just want you to know that you're fired. You know something, Eddie? Now, you look a little worried. Take it easy, honey. You've got nothing to worry about. But if he likes me, what'll I say? Uh, how much money should I ask for? You just sing. Let me take care of the business. I must say, you're a great improvement over the Kate Farley I saw last night. Oh, I'm awfully sorry about what happened, Mr. Hammerstein, but... Oh, don't be. It wasn't your fault. Now, my dear, if uh, you're ready, I am. I certainly. Pardon me. We can sit right here, Mr. Rocco. How do you do? Let's have the music. Uh, it's a new number. Do you know it? I'll get through it. How's this?
that's a little too fast. It's just two four time. That's the way I'm playing it. Yes, I know, but I sing it a little slower. I see. All right, sister. They tell me you were coming. I could have slipped this. Thanks, just the same. Shoot all right. It's no use, Mr. Hammerstein. Your smile gave you away. <laughs> That's too bad. I thought if I frowned, I might get her for a hundred dollars less. <laughs> no. <laughs> all right, then. She's great. Come on into the office and we'll talk it over. Be within a few minutes, Kate. All right. Thank you very much. You played it exactly the way I... Hello, Kate. Now, wait a minute. If you'll only listen, I can, I can tell you why I... Now, look, you might just as well stop squirming because you're going to listen to me if I have to put handcuffs on you again. It seems to me I listened to you once before and wound up on the pier. Of all the selfish, conniving... Now, wait a minute. Remember me? I'm the guy who just played the piano for you. If I wanted to, I could have crabbed your act awful easy. I didn't, though, because I was rooting for you to get the job. I'm sorry about last night, Kate, honest. Oh, you're sorry, huh? That's supposed to make everything all right. No, but it should make you take the cotton out of your ears long enough for me to tell you why I did it. I know why you did it. Because all you want is that new place, and you don't care what you do to get it. Yeah, that's what I tried to tell myself, too. But that wasn't the real reason, Kate. I didn't want you to work here because it put too much distance between us. There's exactly 11 miles between here and Coney, and the elevated runs every half hour. I'm not talking about that kind of distance. Once you hit Broadway, you're going to have every guy who owns a top hat hanging around. This 98 cent skimmer would be a little out of place in your dressing room. That's a lot of nonsense, and you know it. Well, it's happened before. You'll be eating at Delmonico's. It's a lot more than 11 miles from Coney to Delmonico's. There's no elevator that makes that trip. I love you, Kate. I didn't want to lose you. That's why I did what I did last night. That's all I have to say. Thank you for listening. Eddie. There won't be any top hats in my dressing room. All I want is this 98 cent skimmer. Oh, you haven't seen her then, huh? Well, if she comes in, tell her to call me right away, will you? Thanks. She's not at her sister's. They ain't heard from her all day. I'll keep looking. Well, where? Maybe I guess... she's with Dolly. Go and see, will you? Well, I'll try it. Oh, here she comes. She's with Bright Eyes again. Joe in? Waiting for you. Hello. Hello, Joe. Where have you been? I've been looking all over for you. Oh, I'm sorry, Joe, but Eddie came along and... I figured it was better if Kate wasn't around while you were talking business. Hammerstein wanted you to sign a contract. 
He did? You see, what did I tell you? And you were worrying. Oh, why, that's wonderful. He wanted you to meet the songwriters, too. Where'd you go? Every place. Delmonico's, the casino, Wanamaker's, The and... city hall? Well, you shouldn't have run off without telling... City hall? That's right, Joe. Look, just like a liquor license, only it's got cupids on it. Well, you might say congratulations. Sure. Congratulations. Thanks, Joe. Hammerstein will be in his office in the morning. I made an appointment for you at 11. Oh, but I can't make it tomorrow. We're being married this afternoon and leaving on our honeymoon right after. Yeah, that's why we stopped by. I always promised you I'd let you be best man, Joe. How about it? Well, how long will you be gone? Oh, a couple of weeks. I figured Hammerstein wouldn't start rehearsals until August. Okay, I'll tell him you'll sign up when you get back. Oh, thanks. Well, will we see you at the church? Yeah. Which one? The little one across from Brighton Park at 4.30. Okay, I'll be there. We'll see you later then. Yeah, Bye. Sure. Goodbye. Oh, okay. Hello, Frank. How are you? Glad to see you. So nice of you to come. Mr. Finnegan? Right this way. Thank you. Watch your step, please. Well, good afternoon. I have three in the fourth row center. Would that be all right? As long as we can see. I certainly. Right this way, please. Uh, would you like Wagner coming in and Mendelssohn going out? Yeah, yeah, let them both sing. Glad to see you. I've got a nice singer right on the aisle. Right this way, please. No, no, I'm looking for Mr. Johnson. He hasn't arrived yet, has he? No, but he'll be here. If not, a lot of us are wasting our time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, is Miss Farley around? Yes, she's right in that room there. In there, sir. Thank you. carriage all ready because we'll only have 10 minutes to catch the train. I'll have him bring it to the side door. You can get away easier. Good. Oh, pardon me. Yes? I'm sorry to bother you, Miss Farley. Oh, honey, you I... look simply elegant. Now, don't be nervous. I've been married four times, and I tell you, there's nothing to it. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Farley, I'm Horace Carter from the Brooklyn Savings Bank. Oh, now, don't tell me my account is overdrawn again. Oh, no, no. I just wanted to talk to Mr. Johnson, but I understand he's not here yet. Oh, he'll be here in a minute. Well, I've got to get back to the bank, and you're busy, and I, I thought perhaps you could just give him the message. Why, certainly. I'm sorry to bother you with business at a time like this. Oh, how lovely. Yes, aren't they? But we heard you were leaving town right away, and we just wanted you both to know the good news before you left. Good news from a bank? Yes, yes, for once. <laughs> Just tell Mr. Johnson that we've talked it over and we've decided to go along with him to the extent of 15000 on his new cafe. Oh, why, that's wonderful. He'll be delighted to hear it. I'm sorry we took so long to make up our minds, but an investment like this without any security is pretty risky. Sometimes cafes catch on and sometimes they don't. Well, if anybody can make one go, Mr. Johnson can. Well, that's probably true, but uh, frankly, we consider your reputation a little better security than his. Oh, well, thank you. Well, I'm sure an attraction like you would make any cafe succeed. Oh, but I won't be singing in his cafe. I'm going to work for Willie Hammerstein. You are? Well, well yes. Well, that's strange. Well, Mr. Johnson called us just a little while ago and said that now that you and he were going to be married, you'd changed your mind. He told you that, huh? Yes, he led us to believe that it was all settled. No, he hasn't even mentioned it to me. Well, that puts a different complexion on the entire matter. Why, the whole deal was based on the fact that he could get you. Well, I, I'm certainly glad we had this little talk, Miss Farley. Yes, so am I. I'm sorry if I've said anything that... No, no, it's all right. Goodbye, Miss Farley. Goodbye. I know. Louie had a shortcut. We came by the way of Albany. Yeah, I got stuck in traffic. Well, hurry up. You're on in two minutes. You always hold the curtain for the leading man, sweetheart. Where's Kate? She's in there. Oh, you mustn't go in there. It's bad luck. Quiet. Today is my lucky day. Here, see the joke is one of those. Hiya, Mr. Johnson. Brought you a couple of posies for the train. Oh, thanks, Eddie. They're beautiful. Yeah, they've got nothing on you. Did you get the tickets? Yep. Two days in Niagara Falls, then down through Canada, into Detroit, back to Buffalo on the boat, and then home. What are you going to do when you get back, Eddie? I don't know. I haven't decided yet. 
Hey, I look pretty good, don't I? What about that cafe you were talking about? Maybe. If those monkeys at the bank ever make up their mind. Have you talked to them lately? No, just the ones. Last week. I figure from now on, they can come to me. They did. A man was just here. He was? What did he have to say? Quite a bit. Hey, what's the matter? Eddie, did you tell them I was going to sing for you? No, last week I said I might be able to you get talked to them again today, just a little while ago. Today? Why, I haven't talked to anybody. You told them they had nothing to worry about. That you'd have me all tied up in no time. Now, wait a minute. I don't know who was here or what he said, but don't I... Don't try to lie, Eddie. He told me everything. That you couldn't get the money without me. What were you going to do? Try to convince me on our honeymoon? Is that why you're marrying me? Kate, you don't honestly believe that, do you? After last night and now this, what do you expect me to believe? I'll tell you what I expect you to believe. That I'm marrying you because I love you and for no other reason. That's a lot to ask, isn't it? Listen, Kate, I'm telling the truth. I can prove it. Well, you better get started awful fast. Now, I'm not even going to try. Because this is more than just a misunderstanding, Kate. This is our whole future together in a nutshell. You bet it is. And I'm going to be awful sure of the road before I go any further. But you've got to believe me. Not because of any proof I can give you, but because down deep you just know I'm on the level. Unless you can do that, Kate, our marriage won't be worth a hoot. Is that all you're going to tell me? That's all. Someday you're going to find out I'm telling the truth, Kate. And it's going to be too late. If you leave now, it's over. You know that, don't you? She's got him standing on her ears. Would you rather go in the green room and have some champagne? No, thanks. When you're so tired of drinking nothing but champagne. Hmm. Where do you throw your old diamonds? How are you? Glad to see you. <laughs> Excuse me. I'll be right back. Don't hurry. Hello, Joe. Oh. Hello, Eddie. Where have you been keeping yourself? I haven't seen you around. I've sort of been looking for you. Well, I've been living in town. What with handling Kate's business and rehearsals and everything, I've been pretty busy. Kate doesn't know how lucky she is having somebody like you looking after her. Yes, yes. Well, when things settle down a little, let's get together sometime. Don't worry, Joe. We will. Are you uh, going back to say hello? I might. I think I will. Well, I've got to check with the box office. It's good to see you, Eddie. Yeah. saying sensational better than Anna Hill really you're even keeping the critics awake oh, that's wonderful is it because I'm singing good or loud wait till you see the papers in the morning oh I'm keeping my fingers crossed come on Libby yes sir. say uh, you know who I just saw in the lobby Eddie oh did you hear me I said I just saw Eddie I heard you he said he might drop back to say hello Oh, he did. Well, tell him he can save himself the trouble. I won't see him. Do you really mean that? Hang around and you'll find out for yourself. What about my cake? Did they fix it? Yes, and it ought to be ready by now. I'll go get it. Oh, and be sure and tell him to loosen that tie so I can get out of it easily. Yes, and I will. Oh, I'll certainly be glad when this performance is over. I'm going straight home and... Yes, but what about Willie? He wants to join his party at Rector's. No, Joe, I, I'm so tired. I'd much rather just... What's this? Oh, just a little something I picked up today. 
And I didn't win it in a crap game either. I bought it in a store. Oh, it's beautiful. Hey, wait a minute. That's a left-handed ring. No go, huh? No, no, you keep it. Just because a horse runs second, he doesn't ask for his entry fee back. Joe, I'm so sorry. Oh, why, well, honey, there's no figuring these things. You look at a guy and you either get heartburn or you don't. So it's all right, forget about it. Oh, uh, Kate, since I did run out of the money, there's something that you ought to know. That day when you were going to be married, I... Come in. Hello, Kate. Joe? Hello, Eddie. I just want to drop back and tell you how much I'm enjoying the show. You're swell, Kate. Even better than I thought you'd be. Oh, thanks. Glad you like it. How have you been, Eddie? Couldn't be better. I'm opening my new place next month. When it gets running, I want you two to drop out. Oh, we will. We certainly will. Where's your new place going to be? Spot I always had in mind. I thought you took an option on that building. I did, but I let it go. Don't tell me you took it over. <laughs> Eddie, I hate to be the one to tell you, but the only reason I let that place go is because the fire commissioner tipped me off to something. They're going to condemn that building next month. <laughs> Joe, I hate to be the one to tell you, but the guy who told you that wasn't the fire commissioner. Oh, uh, so you sent him over. Mm -hmm. The way you two double-cross each other and smile about it beats me. We've been double-crossing each other ever since we were kids. Haven't we, Joe? Yeah, we sure pulled some beauties. <laughs> <laughs> I'll remember the night on that train going to Memphis. When I was asleep, you threw all my clothes out the window. <laughs> I had to ride all the way to Galveston in my union suit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember. <laughs> and how about the time you got me the date with that blonde? She turned out to be the sheriff's wife. <laughs> but the best one, Kate, was when I was running a freak show in Toledo. Joe painted the mayor's face on the sword swallower's body, and I got 30 days. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, remember the night in South Bend? He paid me off in counterfeit bills, and I got drunk and tried to cash one of them at the police station. Oh, no. <laughs> and what about the day of the church when you sent that guy over? Who was supposed to be from the bank? That was a bill. <laughs> I'll never forget that. I must have talked to a dozen actors before I found the right guy. He, he sure put it over, didn't he? <laughs> you should have seen his makeup. It was perfect. <laughs> I'll bet it was. I got to give you credit, Joe. That was the best one you ever pulled. <laughs> I thought I'd die laughing when Louie told me how he died jumping in traffic. So the... Good night, Miss Farley.
fella who is feeling kind of mellow. He's in peril from a pair of southern eyes. That Miss Katie, they loved it. I hope so. Here you are, Libby.
Thanks for letting me smuggle them in down there, Mr. Hammerstein. Sort of squares me with both of them. Oh, 